Today, I'd like to talk about six requirements for a faith-driven leadership operating system. What in the world is that? It's become popular in the last few years to talk about business operating systems, and they uh, make a great deal of sense. It's an organized way to work on the business instead of just in it. However, there's much focus on many of these about managing performance. In my experience as a faith-driven leader, it's better to manage people, and the performance is a byproduct of leading people properly. That's why I've titled this Six Requirements for a Faith-Driven Leadership Operating System, where the leadership operating system is a set of tools, training, equipping principles that enable a, a leader to do three things, to integrate their faith, business management, and whole person care. Here are the six requirements. Number one requirement is that you build leadership continuously and faster than the organization is growing. The reason is, uh, I call it the uh, execution paradox. As organizations grow, they become more complex. And as they become more complex, it becomes more difficult to keep everyone on the same page. You see it in governments and you see it in large companies today that were extraordinarily effective 10 years ago and they're becoming bigger than they can manage. It's a general principle. A leadership operating system should encourage the development of leaders in a way that happens faster than the complexity of the organization is growing. The second principle is to use biblical principles to build a culture of human caring. There's no greater motivation for caring for people than the belief that they are created by God and in His image and that they have inherent value because God created them. A faith-driven leader has a deep motivation to take care of people. The third principle is to organize the way people interact so the organization can scale and maintain order. It's interesting that our brains are organized in such a way that they're, they're only 2% of our body mass, but they take 20% of the energy. Our brains try to conserve energy, and it does that by taking things that become habits and processing at a lower level of thinking, lower level of energy burn. We've all gone through this. First time we drove a car, it was very stressful. You gradually get comfortable with all the aspects of driving a car. And pretty soon you're doing things you shouldn't be while you're driving a car, thinking about other things and doing texts and those sorts of things. But the principle is still there. In an organization, if you can build good habits, good ways people interact with each other, then they don't need to be focused on the energy it takes to have good communication. If you create the sort of the systems and the habits of the organization that people know how to talk to each other, know how to set priorities, know how to monitor progress, know how to change directions and do it quickly. If we can put our energy into the creative aspects of our life and have habits for the basic communication functions, the organization will scale much better. The fourth requirement of a leadership operating system is to leverage metrics and not bureaucracy to facilitate alignment and learning. So often as organizations grow, we try to maintain control and it results in a lot of rules and hierarchy and so many bottlenecks you can't get anything done. We've learned that it's better to lead with some key metrics so people can adjust their reactions and actions around what the outcome is rather than the process that produces it. Of course, there are exceptions to this when you have extraordinarily high quality standards or those sorts of things that the way it's produced is equally important. But for most organizations and most types of works, a few clear outcomes enables people to align much easier without all the bureaucracy that makes organizations ineffective. The fifth requirement of a faith-driven leadership operating system is to foster mentoring the primary mode of development. Jesus turned the world upside down by mentoring, by discipling a very few people who turned around and discipled a few more, who turned around and discipled a few more. Pouring our energy into the people around us and loving on them, nurturing them, caring for them, training them, developing them, showing them instead of telling is the way to build an organization that will scale and continue beyond you. The last key requirement of a faith-driven leadership operating system 
is to facilitate constructive accountability that unlocks human potential. Humans are uniquely wired to be creative, and it's very easy for us to get distracted on many different things. Accountability creates a way to bring focus back to what's important. An organization that wants to be effective has to set clear purposes, unite people around those purposes, and then have accountability for getting the shared results and doing it in a way that fits the values of the organization.